How's it going YouTube? It's Root Junkie here and today I'm going to have a video here on my Moto G 4th Gen. Now what we're going to be talking about is how to install Saijin Mod 13. This is an unofficial build but I'll link you to the official builds once they get released but we should at least be able to get this on our device. Now there's a couple of prerequisites about this process to install this on the Moto G 4th Gen. Um, number one is you have to have an unlocked bootloader. So if you don't have an unlocked bootloader I'll put a card right up here and you can check that out and that will show you how to unlock the bootloader on your device. Now, if you have the Amazon variant of this product, obviously the bootloaders are locked. If you were a lucky one and were able to get in like I did and unlock the bootloader um, early before Amazon shut it down, good for you. Um, if not, you'll probably this process will really only work on the non-Amazon variant, which I actually have right here, another one. This is the one with Moto Maker, and you can see because it's got the little blue accent around the camera right there. So if you have the Motomaker style, um, as long as it's a, a version that you can unlock the bootloader, then you should be good to go. The other thing you're going to want to do is go ahead and uh, use my other video, which I'll also link right up here. Um, and what that video is, it shows you how to, or actually it automates the process. I have a script that will go ahead and root and install Torp Recovery on your device. So besides that, um, that's pretty much the prerequisites. So as long as you have the Moto G 4th Gen and an unlocked bootloader, you can continue on with the rest of these videos. So here we're going to go ahead and install CM13. Let's go do this. So let's get into this process here. So first thing you're going to need to do is go to the link in the video description down below. I've got everything linked you're going to need to download, okay? I'll show it to you on my phone too. So you go into File Manager, Local. I put mine on my external storage. You can put on internal, whichever you prefer. I do have an SD card in this thing and I put it in the CM13 folder that I created. So you have the CM13 unofficial build. You have the Google applications. I use the Nano, preferably. Like I said, you'll see it linked in the video description. And then you can put SuperSue in here just in case. Um, CM13 should come with root access built in, but it's an option if you want to use SuperSue instead, it is there. So make sure that you have those on your device somewhere downloaded already. Um, obviously, like I said, you need to have Torp Recovery. So I'm going to go ahead and power down. We're going to reboot the device into Twerp Recovery, and then we'll go through the process of installing it. It should be fairly simple. So to boot into Recovery, whether it's Twerp or Stock, you hold volume down and power. And this will boot you into bootloader mode. You can see right here, bootloader mode. Um, right down here, you can also see that uh, it says flashing is unlocked. So you can see that I do have an unlocked bootloader. All right, so we're going to scroll down with volume, go to Recovery, hit power. And this is the other warning you get when you have an unlocked bootloader. Again, same kind of warning. Um, you'll always have this if you have an unlocked bootloader on Motorola devices. So now this is going to boot up into Team Win Recovery Project. Right there you can see. Um, again, my script that when you root the device will install it. So just watch those videos. Um, all right. So the first thing you really want to do is you want to come in here and do a backup. I would backup everything. Swipe across to make, up, make your Android backup. The reason being, you can always reboot back into recovery and restore your backup if you have a problem. You can always use firmware and unbrick it that way and start the whole process over. Um, but So there's multiple options. I'm not going to do a backup right now. I don't even know if I have one. Let's see. Do I have one on my uh, micro SD card? Let's see. I do. Okay, there you go. So there you go. I have a backup I made a while back. So I'm not going to make another one right now. So the first thing we got to do is go ahead and wipe data factor reset the device. So this will wipe data, cache, and Delvic. You can also go into advanced wipes if you want, but this is what you should do. Just do these three. So we'll wipe data factor reset, go back, go back again, and then we want to go ahead and install CM13. So to do that, you can hit install. For me, you're going to navigate to CM13 folder. That's what I, where I've got my file stored. You could also change to your internal SD card if you want and look there. I'm not sure where you downloaded yours to. For that matter, you can even use a USB OTG drive if you want, if you want to plug one in the bottom. So I'm going to go to CM13, and then I'm going to click on the CM13 application. I'm going to add one more zip to add the open Google applications. The ones I'm going to use right here are the ARM 6.0 Nano. So I'll click on those. And then if you want to install Super uh, Sue as your default root managing application, you can do that as well by adding another zip and selecting that. I'm not going to, though, uh, just for my liking. So go ahead and swipe across to Flash. Don't worry about this error. That's from something else I was messing with. So um, this should go ahead and 
flash the system image, which is CM13. CM13 is kind of small uh, when it comes to system images, at least when it comes to like compared to like a stock system image. So it should flash pretty quickly. And then once it's done, it'll go ahead and it'll move on to installing the Google applications, the nano package. So you can see it's verifying uh, update system image currently, and this shouldn't take too long. All right, so that process has completed. We're now flashing the open applications or the gaps or Google apps, whichever you, however you want to say it, it's fine. Uh, you can see right there, open, open gaps. Um, so this shouldn't take too long either. Basically, the nano package is fairly small and compact, and it's the, pretty much the bare minimum um, of applications to install just to get your device up and functioning and having the Google Play Store. That's what's critical about it, um, the Google Play services and so on. All right, there you go. They're actually listing what they're installing. So we have things like the dialer framework, face unlock, face detection, um, how word, hot word search, package installer by Google it's 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 just it's the core core applications to get the device functioning all right there we go should be wrapping up and yeah there we go looks good installation complete so we should be good to go so from here I mean you could back up out of this and, and, and you know just go back to device or you can hit this right here reboot system so we're just gonna do that and we should be greeted here with the famous Saijinmon boot animation. And I'm really looking forward to that because I've wanted Saijinmon on this thing since I got it. I mean, I don't mind that Motorola software actually liked their software. But, you know, having a custom ROM like Saijin on your device is just so awesome. Get rid of all the bloat that was came on this thing or on any of your devices and just be running that clean, clean Saijin mod. Is, is a beautiful thing. So we're going to let this thing boot up. It's going to take a while. It probably is going to do Android is upgrading, so on and so forth. I'm going to shoot through the setup of the phone and then just show you CM13 on the Moto G 4th Gen. So I had to show you guys this just because it was different than what I'm used to seeing, which is really interesting. So the side mod boot animation went away and um, it says preparing Google applications. So it's doing that Google application optimization, but it's just different because it's got this progress bar. It's showing you which applications it's op optimizing. Um, so just unusual to me. I had never seen it on Saijin, so just different. Probably this is what's new in Saijin for a while, but just haven't played with it. So I just thought it was interesting, so I figured I'd show you. Boot up time should not take more than five minutes. If it takes longer than five minutes, something's wrong and you need to either restore your Nandroid backup or do a firmware flash. And I have videos on those too. I mean, if you wanna see how to do a firmware restore on Brick, I'll, I'll link a video for that as well, okay? All right, here we go. Saijimod 13 booted up in all its glory. So I'm just gonna walk through the device, just show you what's on here. Um, like I said, this is unofficial, so it's gonna have some things that maybe normal Saijin doesn't or does, maybe some extras. It's hard to say, we're gonna see what it looks like. So there you go, there's your two menus and how they're set up on your home screen here. Here's your pull down right here. And I guess some things, so we have some location says high accuracy. You can also scroll over and we can get right into themes or audio FX, which is awesome. Love having hotspot toggles. Those should always be there in my opinion. Um, I'm going to turn this actually off and turn it up a bit. Um, you can see users up there. I don't have a SIM card in it right now. Battery. So not bad. How does that look? Yeah, it looks pretty good. All right, so let's go ahead and just look into the app drawer. So you can see you can come up here and you can do any kind of a, a search um, for applications and it'll bring up different applications. So besides that, let's uh, put that back down and look at all of our applications. So there's AudioFX, there's our browser. Um, interestingly themed browser. I thought that was yeah, just a little different. So contacts, FM radio, nice. Love having that feature right there. File browser, I'm sure that's CM file browser. Let's take a look, and it is, of course. So we have that, which is pretty cool. Let's see what else we have here. Music application, Omni Switch. Interesting. I have not actually played with this. It looks like something that you can do theming with, icon packs and whatnot. So interesting addition there. We still have Theme Chooser right down there. Um, screen recorder, nicely built in. Ah, Viper for Android. You also have that. Normally, you only have Audio um, FX. But it looks like they put Viper in here as well. So that's cool. I'm liking it. I'm liking it a lot. So there you go. Those are the applications it comes with. Obviously, there's just a couple Google applications, just enough that you can install then whatever you want, which is really how I like my ROMs in the first place. So you can see you do have um, multitasking here and a clear all button as well. 
which is nice. So let's go ahead and check out the settings. So this all looks pretty standard. There's Viper for Android uh, built in. So they built that into the ROM. Um, just not now for right now, just showing it to you. Which basically is just a way to launch the application from settings. There's your theme engine, which I absolutely love theming. So this is real cool. So there's looks like there's two, the system theme and then another theme built into it. So you can install either one of those or you can download new ones, whatever you want to do, uh, which is cool. So we do have buttons down here. And, and you have buttons left hand, right hand. It's interesting. So we can do some different things here. Now button tint. So I really, let's just go with um, a green because I kind of like green. Yeah, check it out. Love it. Uh, very cool. See that down the bottom? Yeah, that's cool. I, I love customization. So that's pretty standard. Let's see about batteries. So some battery modes you can put it into. Different things right up there. Probably up here. Let's see. Battery optimization and saver. No, not, nothing too much in there. Let's keep going. Profile status bar. So this is going to be a lot of your status bar tweaks. I kind of like doing the center clock. So you get the clock in the center. Um, color switch. Which is interesting. And then you can probably change the color. Let's just go with something green like I had down there in the bottom. Yeah, look at that. See, I, lo I love uh, uh, customization like this. It's just really fun. There's more you can do there. Now, this is interesting. This is the ROM developer. These are some extra things that he put in, things that you can do, which is cool. Um, gestures, clock widgets, app bars. There's all kinds of tweaks. So I, I like it. I actually like the more tweaks, the better I like it. Uh, makes it a lot more fun. So we do have developer, developer options right up here, developer tools. So you have that still accessible. Oh, yeah, unlocked features right here. Root access is important to you if you want to have root access. I do apps and ADB. And now any application needs root access can be granted. Restart system UIs. Manage root access. So you can come in here and you can see what is asking for root. Uh, how things are booting up. Basically, this is privacy guard, and that's how you manage root instead of using super user application. Uh, Android debugging, I'll definitely turn that on. Now, I was thinking there might be a reboot menu in here. Oh, yeah, there it is. Advanced reboot. And the reason you do that is so that when you hold down your reboot menu and you go to reboot, you actually have a bunch of options now. Now you can reboot right back into Torp Recovery, Bootloader, reboot just the system UI, soft reboot. There's just a lot you can do in there. Um, and that's why I like to enable that, that feature for sure. So there you go, guys. So that is uh, CM13 here on the Moto G 4th Gen. Hope you guys like the video. Stay tuned for more videos. Um, please let me know if you want to see something specific in the comments down below. Definitely check me out on Facebook. Um, Twitter, Google+, RootJunkie.com. I mean, you can find me all over the internet, so definitely check out those sites if you're interested. Everything will be linked in the video description down below. That's going to wrap it up for me, and we'll catch you guys in the next one. Root Junkie out.